What is the one sentence you never ever want to hear God say to you? We find this in Matthew chapter 7. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That is one sentence you never want to hear the Lord direct towards you. Our scriptural verse is an evidence that God knows us. God knows everyone on the basis of creation. He created each and every one of us individually. Hence, he knows us more than we know ourselves. The kind of knowing that this verse is referring to is the personal relationship that an individual has with God individually. The identification tag of God is holiness, and if you don't have it, there is no way God will know you. John 15:15, 15, 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Jesus had already set the foundation of our relationship with God for us. We are now friends and no more servants. Yes, we can now relate with God the way we should do, as friends, but not as servants. Many of us are in a relationship with God because of what we stand to gain from Him. This is wrong. But the primary reason we should establish a relationship with God is love, and not because of our desperate need. God doesn't need us the way we need Him. We are completely dependent on him. The Bible tells us this in plain black and white. John 15, 5 I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. You know what this verse tells me? This verse tells me that we need God in more ways than we can ever imagine. We need God in more ways than we will ever know. We need Him. This verse tells me that nothing can exist without Him. There is no life without Him. We wouldn't be able to function without Him. The whole universe revolves around Him. Yet, He would still want a relationship and friendship with us humans. It is a sad thing today that most of us don't even have a relationship with our Maker. Some of us have occupied our days with daily activities that hinder us from developing intimate personal relationship with God, thereby forgetting or ignoring the fact that God wants to have close relationship with us. If we look in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, we see in the Garden of Eden, when God originally created human beings, he would come down to commune with Adam in the cool of the day, thereby establishing a relationship between humanity and divinity. Again, over the years, God has proven to us in different ways that he wants to know us. The scripture confirmed this in 2 Chronicles 32, 31. How be it in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land. God left him to try him, that he might know all that was in his heart. This is about the story of King Hezekiah. God deliberately left him in a tight situation to know the kind of person he was. The apparent way that God can know us is by establishing a relationship with him. Just like in our daily lives, we get to know the people we have a relationship with. If we want God to know us, we must strive to have a relationship with him. We see in the Bible many examples where people become friends of God and he became theirs. Let us briefly study the life of some heroes of faith whom God knew and knows because of their personal relationship with him. 1. Abraham Genesis 18:19. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after me, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. God is speaking here shortly after Abraham entertained angels on their way to Sodom. God himself confirmed that he knows Abraham in this verse. Look at the start of the verse. For I know him. Abraham had a peculiar relationship with God, one that is unusual and astonishing. It is unusual in the sense that very few people reach this level of relationship with God. 
This made Abraham to know the mind of God concerning Sodom and Gomorrah, and put him in the right position to intercede for the perishing souls. You see, this is one of the many benefits of having a relationship with God. Abraham received insight of events to come because of his relation with God. 2. Enoch Genesis 5.24 And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Enoch is one of the examples of the fathers of faith who had an exemplary relationship with God. Based on his consistent walk with God, he was taken to heaven without tasting death. God broke the law of life and death for him because he had a solid relationship with God. Hebrews 11 verse 4 By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch was a man like no other. Enoch was a man renowned for his great faith. The result of his faith was remarkable. He never died. When we study the exploits of men who walked the paths of faith in our generation, we would almost think their stories were formulated. Genesis 5 verse 24 And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Faith was the medium by which Enoch walked with God. Notice the choice of words in the Bible. Enoch walked with God. He didn't walk in front of God. He didn't walk behind God, but he walked with God. And a man or a woman can walk with God by faith. It is not an overstatement to say that God enjoyed his fellowship with Enoch. Consequently, he took him to be with him. The depth of Enoch's fellowship with God made him escape the corruption of human nature. His generation was a lot like ours, sinful and lawless, but yet Enoch walked with God. And you will find today in this generation there are men, and there are women who walk with God. There are men and women who have decided to live a life of faith, a life of holiness. 3. Moses Exodus 33.23 And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Moses was the only man recorded in the scripture that had a glimpse of God. He saw the back part of God. Before this time, Moses had already requested that God should allow him to see his glory. God honored his request because of the relationship that Moses had with him. The Bible tells us that when Moses came back from Mount Sinai, after seeing the back part of God, his face radiated so much so that the people could not look him in the face for days. His face was so bright he had to put a veil over his face. The people didn't see God himself. It was only the radiation of his glory on Moses they saw, yet they couldn't stand it. 4. Elijah 2 Kings 2.11 And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Prophet Elijah was a great man of faith that up till now, people are still reading about his great exploits. Prophet Elijah once shut down the heavens and it didn't rain for about three years. He was caught up by a whirlwind into heaven because of his personal walk with God, a wonder for all mankind. Likewise also, when we walk with God and have a relationship with him, he will make wonders out of our life and turn our life to mystery to show for the world to see. 5. Paul 2 Corinthians 12.2 I knew a man in Christ above fourteen years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, such as one caught up to the third heaven. Apostle Paul was talking of an encounter that he had. Though he chose not to take the glory, it was obvious that he was referring to himself. This is an uncommon experience that can only be birthed by a deep level of relationship with God. Apostle Paul's relationship with God granted him access to see the heavenlies, paradise, while still on earth. This should tell us that when we walk with God or develop a deep relationship with Him, we are bound to enjoy an acceptance that are uncommon.
Having known some of the fathers of faith and what their personal relationship with God gave them access to, it is essential for us to know that the only way to establish a relationship with God is by frequently studying the scripture, setting aside time for the things of God, and praying always. You too can have a friendship with God.